Anytime I reach out and I help another person up, I am actually helping myself first and helping that person second. And I'm going to spend the rest of the few minutes that I have with you telling you why. Why is it that when I give to others, I am essentially giving to myself? I'm going to make two arguments, or rather two types of arguments. Uh, one is just a, is a purely uh, psych secular psychology argument. And the other is the Islamic argument. Now, if I look at this question, from just a purely psycho secular psychology perspective, this is what you'll find. And that is that, so there's traditional psychology which tended to look at what's wrong with the human being. The focus with traditional psychology had been for a long time looking at abnormal psychology. You know, the different things that can go wrong. And then what are the symptoms and then how do we treat it? But more and more, we now are coming out with the, the sort of the new wave of psychology which is called positive psychology. And positive psychology isn't so interested in looking at what can go wrong with the human being but rather more focused on how can we improve the well-being of the human being. How can we just be happier people? How can we live more fulfilling lives? And here is what's very interesting about what they found. They found that in essence, to sort of summarize, Every person is essentially motivated towards seeking more happiness. People want to be happy. Pleasure is something that's just a human motivator. Everyone agree? That no matter what religion you follow, no matter what you know, race you come from, no matter what your background is, there's something that we all have in common, and that's that we all want to be happy. Yeah, everyone agree? All right. So this is, a, this is a shared human motivation and shared human experience. So what they found in their studies is that people essentially have something like a baseline happiness, all right? Everyone wants to be happier, but what the research shows more and more is that people kind of hang out around their baseline, and it's not so easy to go up from that. And what's interesting is they find that even when really amazing things happen to you, you know, people who win the lottery, people who get a new job or a, a, a promotion or a raise, or, you know, they get married or they have a child, these kinds of, you know, nice things that happen to people. What they find is that this will provide a spike in that happiness, but essentially it's more or less, it's sort of temporary. That, that it's a spike, but then people end up coming down to their baseline. So what are they looking for? They're looking for, well, how can we do what? Increase our baseline. Because it seems like these things are happening. And you know, we always think that once I get that job, right, then I'll be happy, right? Once I marry that person, right, then I will be happy. Once I have a child, right, or once I become, you know, a size four, or whatever it is, if, you know, depending on which culture you, you live in. Um, <laughs> I was just <laughs> joking about, I was telling my husband this, that it's, it, it, no matter, this is a side note, but um, no matter what a woman looks like, no matter what size she is, and no matter how much she weighs, she always wants to be thinner. And the reality is, it's kind of like we are so socialized in general to think that no matter where we're at, we could always go less as women. And this is an unfortunate uh, consequence of uh, the media, all right? But that's a side note. So this idea, this idea, and, 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 and that's also because of something called Photoshop. The women don't look like what they look like. It's like, um, we wanna look like these women, but these women don't look like these women. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the photo is Photoshopped. It's, it, I mean, there's, I was, <laughs> there's something called a thigh gap, but then there's just an abyss. And it's like, um, it doesn't exist. Um, but anyway, um, the reality is that we have this idea that when I reach, you know, this particular destination, then I will be happy. But really what the research finds is that's not how happiness works. Happiness isn't a destination. And even when we reach these so-called these so destinations and these milestones in our lives, it doesn't actually make us overall more happy, but it's this very temporary spike. Long story short, what did they find? 
they found that there are, although it is extremely difficult to increase your baseline, there are, they found, two very reliable ways to increase that baseline. And one of them is service to others. And that is very powerful because what it teaches us about human nature is that when I give to you, when I serve you, when I help someone else who's in need, when I reach out and I you know, pick someone else up, I am actually making myself happier. And that's amazing. And the interesting part about it is very few other things will do the same for my own happiness and well-being. That's a powerful reality. You know, they tell you that money doesn't buy happiness, right? They all told you that, but it's a lie, okay? In fact, money buys happiness, and you're going to be like, what's happened to her, right? But, but what the studies have found is that money buys happiness when it is spent on others. And that's amazing, right? That when I spend money on myself, it actually does not make me happier. This is the result that they found in studies, that people can spend on themselves and it doesn't make them happier. There might be, you know, a temporary sort of peak in my pleasure, but that actual well-being is found that the increase in well-being is when I spend on others. And that has been found to reliably increase happiness and well-being. Again, this is the, the design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is how the Creator made our fitrah. Our nature is that it actually feels good to give to others more than it does to just be selfish. And if I keep that money, I may keep it, I may get rich, but it actually isn't making me happier. Whereas if I spend it on others, it makes me happier. Now, so far I haven't talked about religion. So far I'm just talking to you from a purely psychological, secular point of view. That this is just the design of the Creator. That the Creator has made us in such a way that it actually feels good to help. And that one of the ways, in fact this is so powerful, that one of the most effective ways to pull a person, for if a person is, is dealing with depression, if a person themselves is struggling, one of the most reliable ways to pull themselves up is to pull up another person, is to help another person who is suffering, to help, to, to, to lend a hand to another person is one of the most reliable ways to pull myself up. And that's, again, that's the design of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Service to others. Now I told you there were two ways to increase that, that well-being, right? And the second is gratitude. It is the practice of gratitude. It's when we, um, you know, there's this, uh, there's this cartoon, it's sort of like a meme, right? And it has two pictures on it, and I think it's very illustrative of this concept. At the top, it has a little kid, and the little kid is holding a plate with one slice of cake, all right? Now, if we think of, okay, so this cake, this one slice of cake, he is looking at this slice of cake, and he has a huge grin on his face. He's extremely pleased. All right? And then underneath him is another picture of another child who's looking at an entire cake, missing one slice, and he's looking very sad. Why is the one on the bottom sad and the one on the top happy? It all has to do with what they are focused on. You see, the one on the top, the one on the top only has one slice. Let me ask you this question. In terms of, of actual quantity of cake, who has more? The one on the top or the one on the bottom? The one on the bottom. The one on the bottom has the entire cake. So maybe this, the one on the bottom has like nine slices out of 10, all right? The one on the top only has one slice, but the one on the top is actually happy and the one on the bottom is, is sad. And the reason for this is simply because of what is being focused on. The one on the top is focused on what he has. And the one on the bottom is focused on what he does not have, what is missing. And this is another reality that we find very, very powerful reality psychologically. And that is what you focus on grows. What you focus on grows. So whatever you focus on, if you focus on what you have, it'll start to look bigger and bigger in your eyes. And if you focus on what you don't have, it will also start to look bigger and bigger in your eyes. And so the practice of gratitude 
is one of the other reliable ways to increase this baseline happiness. Now I want to take a moment and just sort of switch um, to the, the, what does the Quran and the Sunnah say about service? So I've given you guys an argument of how the designer, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually made the human being that we are motivated to give because not only do we get the reward in the hereafter, but he actually has designed it so that we get an intrinsic immediate reward in this life from serving others is that we actually feel happier we get our own our own happiness and our own um, increase in our own well-being by by giving to others